Hi, I'm Nicole from the Netherlands. And I'm Andrea from Portugal. And we're here in Lund, Sweden at Lund University. We will now meet Asa Peterson, who's running the HD lab, and see what the researchers are doing. Let's go? Yes. Hello. Hello. Hi, Asa Peterson, nice to meet you. Hi, Hi. Nicole, nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Welcome to the lab. Thanks. Thank you. Come on in. Yep. So Asa, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm an associate professor here at Lund University in Sweden and I run a research lab focusing on Huntington's disease. I've been doing HD research now for 16 years. We're looking at uh, changes in emotion and body weight control in Huntington's disease and we're thinking this is coming from a different region in the brain that has been uh, not studied very well before and it's called hypothalamus. Okay, can you see a little bit about the labs now? Yeah. Of course, come, thanks. So, Sophia, what is it that you are doing here? So here, I'm sectioning a mouse brain, so I'm cutting it into very, very thin sections. Okay, and why do you do that? So we want to look what happens in the brain, and then we, we cannot look at the whole brain at once. We need it in really, really thin sections. So here, I cut them at 35 micrometers, so it's very thin, so it's about 30 sections in one millimeter. So Asa, what are we doing at this station? So here is Rachel who has now stained some of those thin brain sections so that we can actually see the neurons in the brain. Seems interesting. Rachel, can you show us a little bit? Yeah, I can. So over here we've got brain sections that have been stained. And um, so what, what we do is we line them, line them up from the front of the brain to the back of the brain. And what we want to do is to put them on glass lights. Okay, can you explain this? Why do you stain them? This staining helps us to visualize like certain populations um, of neurons that we are interested in so that we can have a look at them under the microscope later on. What's happening here, Essa? We're not only looking at mouse brains, but we're also studying human brains. And Sanas here is working on this. These are sections coming from a human brain. So what you see here is a section that uh, hasn't been stained at all. Mm -hmm. So what you see is that the section is completely transparent. So what we need to do now is to use different met methods in order to visualize what's actually on this section. Okay. So the different cell populations. Yeah. So we can do that with various methods. So one method is where you can see has been done on these sen uh, three sections here is that we've uh, taken the section and we just put them in a specific dye that will stain everything that's on the section. So basically you get to see all the different cells that are there under a microscope that yeah. is. Rana, can you tell me what you're doing here? Yeah. Here uh, we are using this computerized microscope to count the number of cells in the brain. Okay, uh, why is it so important to count them? It's important because we want to uh, look at the structural changes and changes in the cell populations in the brain. And to be able to do that we need to, uh, we need to uh, get a quantitative data. Barbara, what do you do here? What I'm doing here is a technique called Western blot, which is a very well-established technique to visualize proteins. There are two types of Huntington. One is a good type, we can call it, and one is a bad type. And the bad type is bigger, and one, of course, the bad one is important for the disease. There you have your green box, but how do you actually see what you've measured? What you see is that later, by taking an image of the, uh, of the protein, and as you can see here on the, on the screen, we have what I told you about before. So the one, a good protein and a bad protein, and you can separate them by size. The bad one is bigger than the, than the good one. So we can recognize them in this way. So Omar, can you tell me a little bit about what you do exactly here? Uh, I'm measuring Huntington protein uh, using a technique called Alpha Lysa. Uh, this technology is uh, uh, based on uh, molecules that binds to uh, Huntington protein and then we use laser to detect the uh, Huntington. 
So it's a new technique that you're using here. Um, so what are the differences between techniques? Yes, this is a new technique we are using uh, in our lab. Um, the difference between this technique and the other techniques are that it's more sensitive and we can more precisely tell the number of Huntington molecule in a given sample. So basically, uh, we use this plate and we use a small uh, amount of sample. We use these molecules that bind to the Huntington and then we incubate this plate for a given time and then we put that plate into the reader and then we uh, read the plates. It's very quick. Uh, it takes a few seconds to read the plate. Uh, I can, I, I can sh show you here. You can see these well, the well that are in different colors. So each color uh, representing the different amount of protein in wells. We are interested in gene therapy. So in order to test the uh, gene therapy effects, we need to have a readout where we can uh, tell that the gene therapy is working and how much is working. So in order to do that, we need to have this assay where we can see how much of a good protein we have and how much of a bad protein we have. Okay, many thanks, Omar. Thank you. So we've seen a lot today, um, and now we're actually wondering what happens to the results after, you know, the results you get here, what do you do with it? So we write articles about the results and then we go to meetings and share them with the rest of the community because we're all working together towards the same goal to understand the disease and to cure it eventually. How is research going at the moment and uh, what are the hopes for the future? I think there are great hopes. Um, although it's a rare disease, there are many very good research groups around the world who are working on this intensively. And as the disease is caused by only one gene, there is a great hope that we, through gene therapy, can silence the gene and stop the disease process and hopefully eventually cure it. As a, we really wanted to thank you for this tour. It was amazing. We loved the experience. Let's just hope for the, the future we can have new hopes, uh, especially mm -hmm. with your help also. Well, Thank you both and thank you to HDO for coming. It was our pleasure to host you here and uh, welcome back. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So that's it for us here in Lund. And we've had a fantastic day today and we hope that you've enjoyed it too. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Oh, <laughs> we will now meet Asa Peterson, who's running the HD lab, and me. And Hi. Hey. Welcome to the lab. Thank you. Do you want to come in? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, Asa, can you tell us a little about your about? Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. Sorry, okay. So, Asa, can you tell? Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are your? Do you have any expectations of the future? <laughs> um, oh, we, we need to retake that. Yeah. <laughs> so, Asa, who will we be? So, Barbara. <laughs> Barbara, what are we uh, exactly? No. Take three. Can you tell me a little bit about the difference between the two methods? Um, there are. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, that's it for us here in Lund. We really have enjoyed our day today and we hope you've enjoyed it as well. So bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> ah, sorry. <laughs> and we have had okay, next. <laughs> <laughs> Loopers for Nicole. <laughs> you started with <laughs> <laughs>